This is Neil Spagman with the Albeda Project. Want to walk you through one of our swales before we really get into the summertime. This was planted in November of 2012, and right now it's the middle of endish of March 2013. So they've had just about four months of growth. This is one of the main swales on the southern side of our demonstration site. And we've got six main pioneer species here. This is an acacia. And I'll just name them as we walk through. This is a Zizifus spina Christi or a jujube. That's an Albizia lebech. These guys are growing the fastest out here. They're doing the best. And then on the other side, we've got a Cisbania Cisbana in the corner. Those have been growing pretty slowly, but they've done really well. Another Acacia. Another Zizifus. And we've heavily mulched. And you'll see his native guy popping up. I'm not sure what he is. But the seeds for that were probably in the manure that we put underneath the straw mulch. Here's another native guy popping up. We've got ants crawling all over him. You can see, looking on the west side of the swale, we've got rock mulch running up and down. And that's because when we had just barely dug this thing, we got a pretty good rainfall and it caused a lot of erosion. And so that's going to help stabilize the slope and slow that water so it doesn't erode our bank. And then the other function it performs is it gives shade, uh, evening shade, to these trees as they are young and growing. And the, the roots are going to be shaded by those rocks. And then as a tertiary purpose, these might be loose enough to provide habitat to small lizards and other predators that will eat bugs that come in here. Here's an Albizia lebech with some of those natives that came, came with the manure we got. Oh, and then this is the uh, this is a Parkinsonia aculeata. Some of them are doing really well, some of them seem to have not grown at all. This is a Moringa stick. It's, uh, we planted these, all of the Moringas we delayed on, we planted these maybe a month ago. We've got maybe 15 of them, and a few have just started showing leaves. This one isn't yet. In fact, it looks like it's pretty dead, but you can see there are some scratch marks on the bark there. When you, We keep scratching the bark every few days just to see, when you scratch it, you see green underneath, so I know it's still alive. It's just not ready to sprout yet. Now we planted all of these. You can see we're, we're just bordering our swale. We're going to do another few layers of trees along here, uh, planting in October. And the idea is that these are our hardiest desert pioneers that are going to amend the soil, create the initial shade and windbreak that we need, 
as the site gets more and more developed and the soil becomes more biologically active then it's going to be able to handle uh, some more productive fruit trees. Here's a, this is if this is doing really well. We've got a lot of variety in how these are performing. You can see this Albizia Levick is significantly taller than most of the other ones we've got. He's grown at least a meter in the last three months. Now on our site we have about seven kilometers of swale and uh, we've planted the southern half of the site. You can see on the far end up towards that mountain we haven't got any trees up there. In part that's because we wanted to make sure that all of these were going to work before we planted the whole place. Um, in part it was because we didn't, our uh, drip irrigation doesn't have the pressure we need to reach over there right now, so we have to amend our water system a bit. Here's another local that's spread up with the acacia. It's got some nice silvery color there. Since we've planted these, we've seen pretty amazing spurt in animal life here. I mean, you can hear the birds chirping as we get into early summer here. And I, we, we've got way more birds than we had even six months ago or even last year during the winter. We've seen ladybugs and grasshoppers and earthworms and other beneficial insects that are starting to show up. Crickets. You can hear crickets here at night now, which we didn't hear before. So there's been... The site has responded very positively to, to getting these in, and... That's very encouraging. Here's one I wanted you to see. This is a... Moringa. That we planted about a month ago, and we got all these new little leaves coming up. So it looked like it was dead for a good two or three weeks, and now it's just coming up with new life. These leaves taste a lot like horseradish, and they're tremendously good for you. So it's one of the things I'm more excited about introducing to the people here. Now here's another one and it hasn't come up yet. But it's still alive. Let's see if I can show it to you. We get real close here. Let me just put a little scratch in it. I don't know if you can see, but that's still green right there. And that's how I know it's still living. Here you can see the salt buildup on our emitter from our drip irrigation system. That salt is from the water that we've been dripping with. We've been dripping with local brackish water rather than trucked in desalinated stuff. And that, I mean those salt, those salts right there show us you know, just how salty this water can be. And yet our trees seem to be doing alright with it. That's a real accomplishment for us.